Welcome back to the world of Cube Control plugins. Go is the most popular choice among developers of Cube Control plugins. In this episode, we'll take a look at writing plugins in the Go programming language and highlight some of the libraries that you can use and show you a sample repository that can help you get started. In the previous episode, we have talked about developing Cube Control plugins in Bash. While Bash can work for small plugins, it gets exponentially complex and out of control really fast when you try to do non-trivial tasks. Plus, Bash is hard to test, hard to write correctly. This is where Go really shines. Go is the programming language that Kubernetes and Kube Control are both implemented in. So naturally, there is a package ecosystem that can help you develop your plugins as well. But in general, Go is also a pretty popular programming language for writing command line tools that you can easily distribute as a statically compiled binary to multiple platforms. Let's say you want to develop your Kube Control plugin idea in Go. Where do you get started? Thankfully, the Kubernetes project offers some official Go packages and a sample plugin repository in Go to jumpstart your idea. Let's start with the Go module that will help you a lot in this journey. It's called case.io slash CLI runtime. This module has two notable sub packages. One is generic CLI options. The other one is printers. First, let's talk about the generic CLI options. As you can guess from the name, this package helps you add the same flags that Kube Control has to your command line program as well. That way, your users will feel right at home because re they're reusing the same command line arguments that Kube Control has. For example, the dash dash namespace option is a popular one. Another one is dash dash output option, which has several options such as JSON, YAML, and Go template and JSON path. You can use this dash dash output option, which works the exact same way that Kube Control also does. By the way, in case you didn't know, Kube Control actually does have some global options that work on every single Kube Control command. Uh, if you want to see these, you can run Kube Control options. But basically, the output looks like this. These options help Kube Control users configure many things, such as uh, which Kube config file to use, which cluster to connect to, what is the TLS settings that we should use while connecting to that cluster. So, if you use the generic CLI options package, you can add these options to your plugin very easily. Lastly, when you use the generic CLI options package, it gives you a Kubernetes API client instance that is already initialized with the user's preferences by looking at the command line flags and the environment variables. With this API client, you can directly start making API calls to the Kubernetes API and you can start implementing your plugin idea. So long story short, use this package. The next package I was going to talk about is the printers package. And this package helps you print Kubernetes objects in a table view, JSON, YAML, or you know, similar output formats. So if you're printing Kubernetes resources back to the user, definitely consider using this package and do not try to implement everything from scratch yourself. Now, let's talk about this repository that has a sample plugin in Go. This is a GitHub repo that you can find at github.com slash Kubernetes slash sample CLI plugin. Uh, this repository is something that you can just fork and start coding your plugin with because it has a, the, a lot of the boilerplate already initialized there. As a matter of fact, the many Go-based plugins that we have today have started from here. So let's take a look at its source code. In the main method, we initialize our new command line program and we create an instance of the IO streams and we pass our file descriptors there. Let's go to the file where the action happens. As you can see here in one of the methods, we load a kubeconfig file in case you need to read something from it. But you know, instead of calling the toraw kubeconfig loader, you could just call the toRest config method and you can get a client to the Kubernetes API and start making API calls with it. And again, as I mentioned earlier, this sample plugin uses the generic CLI options package. And if you run this command with dash dash help option, you're going to see that all these options that we want to have in common with Kube Control are already added to this program. And you know, this is one of the best practices, regardless of the language that you use. Uh, if you're developing Kube Control plugins, uh, you should be as close to the Kube Control experience as possible. So the last thing to note about Go plugin development is actually an import statement. So there is this authentication package in client Go that registers some authentication uh, providers to your program. So if you have a Kube Control plugin that makes Kubernetes API calls, which is most plugins, 
unless you import this package, the plugin won't work with certain cloud providers. It might work fine on your machine because maybe you're using Minikube to test your plugin. However, for the plugin to work for a broad range of users, you need to import this package. You know, as a result, you're gonna get more dependencies in your program, but then you're reaching more users. Hopefully this is a good starting point if you want to develop Cube Control plugins in Go. Uh, I'll be adding the links and a extra blog post that will help you get started in the description. In the next episode, we'll take a look at some language independent best practices for Cube Control plugin development. So subscribe and stay tuned. See you in the next episode.